Aurora is the smallest, the oldest, and thought by many to be the best ship in the P&O fleet. In this video, I'm going to take you around deck by deck to show you what this amazing ship has on offer. Now, unofficially, this is the 14th deck on the ship. This is the highest level at the very front of the ship that has a few sun loungers and some tables and chairs. And this is a nice and quiet place to hang out with a drink and read a book. And now I'm going to drop down to the first proper deck, which is deck 13. Which is the sun deck that nearly wraps around the whole of the ship. Which offers both great views of the pool deck below, which I'll show you more of a little later in this video, and also out to sea. And if you'd like to spend a little longer outside, then sun lounges and tables are available. And to the left is the upper level of the crystal pool. Heading inside, you'll see a couple of table tennis tables and plenty of tables and chairs. The roof itself was supposed to be retractable, but it was closed on my sailing. If you've seen it open, please let me know in the comments below. Heading outside and you can actually see the name of the ship while on board, which is something that's pretty rare. And on my left is the sports court area. Here you can play some five-a-side football, practice your swing in the golf nets, or shoot some hoops, as the kids say. Unfortunately, my progress here was halted by some maintenance work taking place. They were repainting the white lining for the deck games. So after a very quick detour, I'm now at the aft of the ship. This is the first quick glimpse of one of the most stunning features aboard this ship. And something just to point out is that Aurora is an adult only ship. And in terms of cruise offerings, she's one of the most diverse ships sailing out of Southampton. From short cruises around channel ports to longer sailings around the Mediterranean and Scandinavia, and even grand tours that take many months. There really is a cruise for all budgets sailing on Aurora. She was launched in the year 2000 and can accommodate 1,878 passengers in 939 cabins with 850 crew. This is one final look down on the pool deck before heading inside at the front of the ship. Mounted on the walls are plaques of the ports that Aurora has previously visited. And the first of the spaces here is the Uganda Room. This elegant room is primarily used for private parties and for weddings. And is named after the SS Uganda which served as a hospital ship during the Falklands War. And opposite is the ship's library. which also serves as an internet hub. And it also has the details of the Wi-Fi package should you wish to purchase this during your cruise. And of course, there's a wide selection of books to choose from and some comfy seats to read them in. The Crow's Nest is one of the most popular venues on board the ship. This cocktail bar has plenty of comfortable seating and is perfect for relaxing during the day with a drink looking out to sea through this huge panoramic window. The crow's nest is more lively during the evenings with pre and post dinner drinks 
and live music being played. And if you know where these stairs head to, please let me know in the comments below. And if alcoholic drinks aren't your thing, then Costa Coffees are available here. Deck 12 is the Lido deck, which has this hot tub, and behind that is the main Riviera pool. And there are plenty of sun lounges for you to relax and catch some rays. And the Riviera bar is nearby, so you won't have too far to go grab yourself a drink. And this race platform is an ideal place for bands to play some live music. And this huge Aurora deck chair is very easy to get into and very difficult to get out of. The Lido Grill is a perfect place to get some poolside snacks such as burgers, hot dogs, french fries and pizza. And for those looking to cool down on a hot day, the ice cream parlour is next door. The Crystal Bar is here serving a wide selection of drinks, which is perfect for the Crystal Pool. And along with the indoor pool is also two hot tubs. And having both outdoor and indoor pools makes Aurora a great all-weather ship. And this 11 foot high bronze sculpture by Alan Sly is called the Pearl Diver. This is the Oasis Spa. Which is the perfect place to have some pampering when you're on board the ship. It is split over two decks with the hairdressing and spa treatments here. There's a barber for the gents and specialist makeup artists for the ladies, perfect for celebration night. And there are treatment rooms for massages, facials and acupuncture. Although do be aware that all of this does come at an additional charge. And don't forget to wash your hands before going into the Horizon restaurant, which is the ship's buffet. It has a great open plan layout with plenty of stations available. And here's a quick look at what they offer for breakfast. And it's also open for lunch, dinner and late night too. And I'll have a full review of all the dining options on board the ship coming up on my channel soon, so don't forget to subscribe. At the rear of the buffet is one of my favourite speciality dining restaurants on board P&O ships, The Beach House. Which has an excellent Caribbean and Latin American inspired menu. And at the aft of the ship on deck 12 is the pennant bar. And there's plenty of tables and chairs should you wish to take your buffet meal out for some alfresco dining. And this is an ideal place to come with a drink and check out these amazing aft views and out to sea. Dropping down to deck 11 and outside there's just some additional seating. And also on this deck is the Oasis Spa Gym. It has equipment such as cross trainers, exercise bikes, running machines, bench machines, and free weights. So you can burn off some of those calories you added in the buffet. 
all the internal areas on decks 10 and 9 are reserved for cabins. There's just outdoor space with seating at the aft of the ship. This is deck 8 and to my left is Sindhu which is the Indian inspired specialty restaurant. And this is one of my favorite places to dine, even at sea or even when I'm on land. I honestly can't recommend Sindhu enough. And on this sailing, it was the first time I went here for tiffin lunch. Here you get to choose either one, two or three dishes. This was an absolutely fantastic experience and I can't wait to show you more. And just past Sindhu is Raffles Bar, which offers muffins, pastries and fresh fruit. It also serves Costa coffee and alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. And I didn't think that the price of the coffees was too expensive. And there's plenty of seating available here in what's known as Raffles Court. And next on deck 8 is Vanderbilt, which is an absolutely huge cardroom. And is one of the areas that really shows the age of the ship. This was a rather underused area of the ship with only jewellery showcases and the occasional quiz here on micros. And in the middle of the ship is the playhouse. Which is a 213 seater cinema. It shows some of the latest films along with lectures, enhancement talks and even live sport. And next is the photo gallery. Here you can review and purchase the professional photographs you've had taken while on board the ship. And here there's a spiral staircase down to the deck below. However, I'm heading further along to the glass house, which is another one of the specialty dining restaurants on board the ship. It is curated by TV presenter, wine expert, columnist, author and p and food hero, Ollie Smith. And also offers tapas, lighter bites and more substantial meals for lunch and for dinner. The Glass House is a great place to come and have a cup of tea or coffee. And it also has its own signature beer. Two pints of Jolly Ollie, yes please. And I'm now heading past a few cabins and out onto the aft terrace. Here you'll find a pool, two hot tubs and plenty of sun lounges. You can imagine on a sunny sea day, this incredible space will be very busy. And thankfully, the terrace bar is just behind you, so you can quickly go grab a drink. And directly below on deck seven is Carmen's, which is a very popular show lounge. Here you'll find activities such as bingo and quizzes during the day. For those of you feeling more energetic, there are fit step and line dancing classes too. But it's during the evenings when Carmen's comes alive, with live music and then a disco into the early hours. P&O house band Pulse regularly perform in here. 
playing a selection of songs from their excellent repertoire. And while there's plenty of seating, it can fill up quickly. So if there's a performance that you just can't miss, I suggest getting here with plenty of time. Champion serves as the pub on board the ship. If you fancy a beer either on tap or in bottles, then this is the place to come. And this is also where you're going to find all the live sport. Other events in here include karaoke, quizzes and even horse racing. But not with real horses of course, video horse racing. And this is by its very nature one of the most liveliest places on board. And it can be a lot of fun. And if you fancy trying your luck, then the Monte Carlo Casino is here. Which has a good variety of slot machines for a ship of this size. And it also has a pair of blackjack and roulette tables. And the atmosphere in here, especially in the evenings, can be very lively. And this is the cashiers where you go in to collect your winnings. And they even have my old favourite, the double diamond slot machine. And the corridor also serves as the Fine Art Gallery by Clarendon Fine Art. This is an entrance to the Medina restaurant below, although on my sailing it wasn't in use. If you know why this wasn't in use, please let me know in the comments below. I'm actually quite intrigued by this. And from here you have to almost double back on yourself to enter Masquerade, which is another bar. During the day there'll be events such as art talks and bowling. And in the evenings there'll be silent disco, theme musical performances and a nightclub into the early hours. And this is where the first of the shops are located. This is Mayfair and at this end of the shop is where you can buy your official p Aurora merchandise. And each evening a pianist will play on this baby grand piano a selection of songs in Charlie's. Here you can relax with a pre-dinner cocktail in a comfortable chair listening to the music. Moving back around, there's more items to sell in Mayfair, such as clothes, bags and hats. And there's a jeweller selling Pandora, Cordelion, Leon and Swarovski items. And at the heart of the four-deck atrium is this spectacular 35-foot sculpture by artist John Mills. And I'll quickly point out here that Deck 7 is also the Promenade Deck. And the really good news is that it's a full wraparound Promenade too. And walking around it is a great way of getting your steps in. And there are also some chairs you can sit and watch the world drift by. And just look at this beautiful wake view. However, it's time to head back inside and go into Anderson's. Which is a country club star bar named after the founder of P&O back in 1837, Arthur Anderson. Here they offer a great selection of drinks, including the signature gin flight.
and it's a great location for either a pre-show drink or even a nightcap. And there's even a portrait of Arthur Anderson hanging on the walls. It's easy to see why this is such a popular location for both piano regulars and newbies alike. And at the very front of the ship is the Curzon Theatre, which is where the main entertainment happens each evening. This 652-seater venue features shows such as Odyssey, where both old and new songs are given a twist, and a tribute to a musical theatre called Applause. On my sailing, we only had special guests, which were great, but hopefully I'll see the production shows next time I'm on board. There are some more shops here on Deck 6, which I'll come to shortly. Directly ahead is Explorers. This is where you can book your shore excursions. On my cruise, due to inclement weather, the ship didn't actually dock, so we didn't get to go on ours, which was a bit of a shame as it was the reason we booked the cruise. Piccadilly is the shop here, and it's split between jewellery and watches in this part, and fine fragrances, with brands such as Clinique, Lancome, Tom Ford and Dior. And Mark Jacobs, Calvin Klein, Giorgio Armani and Paco Rabanne. And usually quite a bit cheaper than on the high street at home. Emporium is a duty free shop where you can purchase spirits and tobacco. The Medina restaurant is the first of the ship's two main dining rooms. And that's the lovely staircase that sadly wasn't in use. Where you can eat whenever and with whomever you choose. And the food and the service here are both very good. And I'll show you more of the food in my upcoming dining review. And the Alexander restaurant is a formal club dining, where you eat with the same people at the same table each evening. And I do really enjoy the classic P&O breakfast. And this is another look at the beautiful atrium on board Aurora. I think that this is one of the reasons the ship is so popular as it harkens back to a more elegant time in cruising. And I'm now going to take the staircase down to the next deck. And the first thing that will greet you on deck five is guest relations. If you have any questions or queries while on board, this is the place to come to have them answered. And if you didn't know, P&O Cruises sponsor the BAFTA Television Awards. There's some comfortable seating here in Palm Court. And the walls are adorned with some more port plaques and photos of the senior officers. And should you wish to book another cruise while you're on board this one, you can do that here, and you can also sign up for the P&O Loyalty Program. And also on deck five is the sea view cabin that I stayed in. The cabin itself was compact and bijou, but perfect for a shorter sailing like the one I was on. And I'll leave a link here to my full cabin tour and review. One of the things I find really useful on P&O ships is the passenger laundrette.
which is obviously great to have on longer cruises, but also really useful for pressing your clothes for formal night on short cruises. And on deck four is the medical center. I really hope you don't need to visit, but it's there should you need to. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on.